Okay, let us now discuss Criminal Law 2. So we start with this first title, Crimes Against National Security and Law of Nations. Lagi nating tandaan, pag ang pinag-usapan natin ay Crimes Against National Security and Law of Nations. Ang threat dito ay nagmula sa labas. Kaya kung tingnan natin under this title, hindi maisali ang rebellion at saka sedition, pati na ang kodita. Bakit? Because in the case of rebellion and in kodita and in sedition, the threat originates in the country, in our country. So, hindi siya nag-originate sa labas. So, ito ang pinaka-distinctive point sa crimes against national security and law of nations with that of crimes against public order, kagaya ng rebellion, sedition, at saka kodita. So, let us start with treason. Ang ibig sabihin ng treason ay ang pagtraidor sa sariling bansa. Let us go to the elements. The offender is either a Filipino citizen or a resident alien. And there is a war involving the Philippines. And the act of the offender may either be Libby's war against the government or adheres to the enemies, giving them aid or comfort. So itong Libby's war at saka adherence to the enemy, ito ang tinatawag natin na overt acts of treason. So, Kung tingnan natin ang offender dito, either Filipino citizen or resident alien. So, hindi lang limitado sa Filipino ang malayabo dito. Pwede din ang foreigner basta naninirahan siya dito sa Pilipinas. And this is very important. Meron dapat na war involving the Philippines. Ibig sabihin, Kahit na gaanong pagtatraidor ng ginawa ng isang tao sa Pilipinas, sa sarili niyang bansa, pag walang gyera na involve ang Pilipinas kontra sa ibang bansa, then there is no treason. Walang pagtatraidor na matawag or walang matawag natin na krimen na treason. Okay? Again, to emphasize, ang treason is a war crime. Meaning to say, makumit lang siya kung ang Pilipinas ay involved sa gyera. And again, the act of the offender is leave his war and adherence to the enemies. So, let us discuss the meaning of this leave his war and adheres to the enemies. So, ito yung mga requirements sa levying war. There should be actual assembling of men. Dapat merong actual na pag-gather uh, na mga tao. At saka, ang purpose ng gathering na yan is to execute treasonable design by force. Ang pagsagawa sa pagtatraidor na purpose sa pamamagitan ng Kwersa. And the intent is to deliver the country in whole or in part to the enemy. And number four, there is collaboration with foreign enemy or some foreign country. So merong tinatawag natin na sabuatan sa kalaban na bansa. When we say giving aid or comfort, Ito yung meaning niya. It must be accompanied by adherence to the enemy. So, kahit na nagbigay ayuda sa kalaban or nagbigay ng comfort, meaning to say, mapadali ang pagsakop nila sa bansa natin, hindi pa rin yan matawag na treason hanggat walang tinatawag na adherence to the enemy. Kasi merong pagbigay ayuda, 
or merong pagbigay ng bagay na mapadali ang pagsakop ng ibang bansa sa bansa natin pero hindi naman alam ng tao hindi naman niya pinorpose talaga na try to rin ang kanyang bansa walang tinatawag natin na simpatiya sa ibang bansa so when we say adherence the meaning of which is psychological and emotional sympathy to the enemy so ibig sabihin nakisimpatiya na sa kalaban it must have the effect of strengthening the armed forces of the enemy or weakening the armed forces of the Philippines. So, kunti na natin, ang must pala ay hindi lang adherence to the enemy, but the effect of or comfort para matawag natin na there is what we call as treason, it must have the effect of strengthening, meaning to say, mapalakas ang puwersa ng kalaban or it could be weakening the armed forces of the Philippines mapahina ang puwersa ng Pilipinas okay let us go to the next how do we prove treason ano ang evidence na kailangan para ang tao ay malayable for the crime of treason there are two possible evidence First one is the two witness rule. Meaning to say, there has to be at least two witnesses to the same overt act. So, tandaan natin, dalawa ang tinatawag natin na overt act na pinag-usapan. Ang una, yung tinatawag natin na living war. At ang pangalawa ang adherence to the enemy. So again, we have living war and then adherence to the enemy. So it could be this one or it could be this one. So ang sabi dito, two witness rule. Dap, dapat at least no? minimum of two may dalawang two witnesses na nagtestify patungkol sa same lang na overt act so either ang overt act na pinag-usapan is living war at saka ang isa is adherence to the enemy same lang so pag sinabing ano ulit pag sinabi nating living war that is assembling of men Ito naman ang pagbigay ayuda sa kalaban. Let us have an example. Halimbawa lang, nandito si at saka si B. Silang dalawa ay nagtestify laban kay C. Ang sabi ni A, nakita niya si C na nakipag-gather sa ilang mga tao para kalabanin ang puwersa ng Pilipinas. Ibig sabihin, ito ang tinatawag na living war. Ito naman si B, nag-testify siya na nakita niya si C na giving aid or comfort. There is what we call as adherence to the enemy sa pagbigay ayuda sa kalaban. So, pwede na ba malayable si C sa testimonya ng dalawa. Ang sagot natin ay no. Hindi ma liable si C because ang testimony ni A that is living war at saka ang testimony ni B that is adherence to the enemy are two overt acts. Ang sabi dito, same overt act ang sinasabi. So, we have here two overt acts na na-testify ng ni A at sa kali B. Therefore, hindi ba liable si C dito? Kung hindi man sa two witness rule, pwedeng maliable ang tao if there is what we call as confession of accused in open court. 